things that I typically have conversations with homeschool moms about with Whitney from Sensational Moms. You got to meet Whitney. I, she's a lovely soul, first of all, and I met her on Instagram, of course. And uh, on Instagram, I discovered that we have a very similar overlap in some of the things that we speak to. And that is all about reactivity and overwhelm. And so she speaks about helping women address their overwhelm and reactivity to trade their reactivity and overwhelm for connection. And I look forward to chatting with Whitney and she can give me the full um, description of what she is doing because I just put her in vanish mode so I couldn't read the full uh, bio. So, Whitney, you are here. or overwhelm is a thing in your homeschool. I'd love to hear how it manifests for you because I know we're all different and we experience different things. We value different things. Our expectations are different. Hey, Whitney, <laughs> I figured it out. Welcome. There's always a learning curve with tech, isn't there? <laughs> well, you think I've been doing this a lot, actually, and I do not know what I did. I pressed some button and pressed vanish mode and then it vanished. Would you introduce yourself to sure. everyone that's listening? Yeah. I I'm Whitney with Sensational Moms, and um, I am so excited to be bringing my skill set as an occupational therapist to moms. Um, so much of my background and experience is as a pediatric OT, yeah. and I really hit a wall in my homeschooling journey with my kids, just being home all day, every day with them. Um, turns out a lot of the buttons that I've had, I was able to ignore until I was just surrounded all the time. So I take those skills um, and help people understand their, really their sensory triggers yeah. and how they can master them instead of being controlled by them. Yeah. I love that. And I, I would you repeat what you said, or maybe I put you in vanish mode too, but you're trading your overwhelm and your reactivity. Yes. For, for connection and freedom. Yeah. Yeah. yeah beautiful. Mm -hmm. So tell me more about the connection and the freedom. Yeah. So I, I think that it is important first to connect with ourselves, yeah. Yeah. um, we, to really understand what our needs are. And my perspective about that really comes from that sensory perspective. You know, we're touched out, we're talked out and that really sends us into a fight or flight freeze mode and we kind of can stay shut down and withdrawn or reactive yeah. to the people that we love the most. So yeah. um, figuring out what we need, you know, first of all, what do we do when we are in that place of being stuck um, in the moment, right? Like we're trying just not to yell, yeah. frankly, at our kids mm -hmm. and we are feeling guilty, like a monster yeah. <laughs> thinking, who is this person? What do we do in that moment? And then once we're able to get a system for, okay, well, here's what I can do. Let's yeah. step back and see how can we keep from getting to that edge so often to really be able to enjoy being with our kids most of the time, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah, that's what I always <laughs> say too, most of the time. Right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I love actually talking about this from different perspectives because this this entire discussion could be, like I, I, my approach has been from the self-compassion angle, addressing your big emotions. You'd hear me speak a lot about that. Um, but I also hear other people talk about it from the highly sensitive person perspective. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes I hear about it from the ADHD perspective. Not that, not saying that all these things are the same because I'm fully aware they're not, but there's different approaches to, you know, of course, there's trauma, there's one, um, coming from the trauma-informed perspective. There's so many different ways to frame this discussion. At core, what I hear you saying and what I hear a lot of moms saying is that there's a lot of triggers. Um, and I don't use that one lightly because the triggers can be more in the context of trauma, but reactivity in the context of the rest of our you know, homes or our mom experiences that there's just a lot of reactivity and guilt and shame and dissatisfaction and frustration. And we might 
express those things differently, but ultimately it is not happy with how we're showing up. Right. And it's very complex, mm -hmm. right? And there are so many angles of looking at yeah. this. Um, and I love the idea of self-compassion mm -hmm. because looking at those big emotions, yeah. there is absolutely overlap because yeah. um, when all of this was kind of coming to a head in my life mm -hmm. was when I was really at a low point. Um, it was during COVID, right? Mm -hmm. Because all of us yeah. were pushed beyond our max and uh, I had relocated yeah. Yeah. twice yeah. with my family. You know, so there's a lot mm -hmm. of emotion that was going on that then under the surface, these sensory sensitivities that I had, my, my bandwidth was just so much smaller. Yeah. You know, maybe I, if I, um, I can handle, you know, my bandwidth is different now because I'm in a different place emotionally, Yeah, but it's all, you know, interwoven. Yeah, it really is. And uh, like, so what would you say an approach to addressing that is? Cause I know there's many approaches, but, what would be a way you would approach it? So I just saw your cat. I thought it was my cat. I thought I, thought I loved him outside. Um, okay. So at first we start with in the moment, because when most moms come to me, you know, when you have words to put with those, that reactivity and you figure out, oh my gosh, that's me. Then, you know, first we have to get that first aid going going on like yeah. okay well how are you going to get from the milk spill in the morning to the interrupted read aloud how are you going to get through all of these overwhelming sensory experiences without losing it right yeah. so we start with um with th those techniques so i have a great handout that's available on my website uh, if you go to www.sensationalmoms.com, you can fill out yeah. the form. And there are three ways to just get mm -hmm. started. Um, there mm -hmm. are so many options, which is why I love working in the coaching relationship, because it is overwhelming. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. There are so many resources. So there's three great ways to get started. You know, it really just isn't as simple as, well, you know, just go to a quiet room and take a few breaths. Like, no, <laughs> I wish it were that simple, right? Yeah. If um, I think it all depends on where people are at, because for me, um, in, like in the beginning, I guess it depends on, you know, it really depends on the story with each child, interestingly, because my experience, of course, was universal. It all builds up with having all different, you know, all the kids at the same time. But my, my actual experiences with each of the kids was different. And certain kids were far more, uh, I don't know what. What if another better word but triggering like had more potential for triggering inside of me whether that meant that I was like working out past relational issues with significant people that I didn't have a healed relationship with yes or you know um, like so many possibilities but certain kids definitely caused more of an internal reaction for me at different times though throughout my two decade plus parenting years I definitely saw certain times where I was way faster to react. And I remember when people would say, here are the ways that you could address it or how you could tackle this thing. I, I just thought, I don't, I don't know what you're talking about. I am not able to slow down that much in order to do the logical best thing or the right thing in this scenario. That's I right. That's felt right. Who heated and my amygdala yeah. and whatever yes. other parts of my brain are on fire right now. You're speaking my and language. So, you know, I love that neuro talk. <laughs> yes. It's, what is it? It's the amygdala and it is another. Yeah, your limbic part. system, your amygdala. I mean, you know, we're, we're so often we teach mom these, you know, cortical strategies, these prefrontal yeah. cortex skills that really only work when you are cool calm and collected yeah. and you are exactly. not cool calm and collected yeah. when your kids are you know pushing those buttons yes and and you have the buttons more importantly and you have the but unhealed buttons inside of you mm -hmm. so then they're pushing them and for me what i knew i had to do right away was to walk away just walk away like no explanation needed and not that that's the long-term goal is just to just turn around and leave but it's a very useful tool in the beginning. Yes. Everything is so on fire. You just need yes. to turn and go. Yes. So that's one of the first places that I do start is actually working on a script for yourself. Yeah. 
I know that we work on some of that, you know, depending if you follow gentle parenting strategies, you know, how are we going to script with our child? But, you know, we need to have a way of dealing with those moments with ourselves. So Absolutely. I've rehearsed, you know, we can work real time together in a coaching relationship and say yeah. what feels, you know, authentic to you in that moment that you can remember and mm -hmm. practice yeah. and so that you can have a way to communicate with your child. And for me, I will say, it's not you. It's me. I just need a minute. Yeah. And that, that change of scenery, we do it for babies, right? Yeah. Like we think, let's go outside or let's go take a bath yeah. for infants. Mm -hmm. And why don't we do that for adults? Yeah. You know, take a moment, go to the bathroom, turn on the water, splash your face or go outside, look up and get a literal change of perspective. Yeah right? Yeah, so many possibilities. And yet we don't do that. We're so driven and so productivity focused in our culture that we don't give ourselves time to be human, I think. Mm -hmm. um, so I started yeah. trying to um, teach my children these skills for themselves, because yeah. I was seeing um, for two of my kids in particular, as coming from that pediatric background, I could see, oh, well, they really need to work on these things. And we were getting nowhere. Mm -hmm. And come to find out it was really me yeah. that needed yeah, to exactly. get a hold of those skills yeah. and to model them for my kids. That, and then without me the going through this revelation. curriculum, yeah. like I wasn't having to go through the program mm -hmm. that I learned in OT school mm -hmm. with them anymore because they could see something is different about mom. You know, I, I did not get that, Whitney. I did not understand that concept at all. Like we call it co-regulation mm -hmm. now or various words. Um, but to know that whatever the work is that you want your child to do, if they're losing it all the time, if they're, you know, whatever issue you're having, I'm not saying you're responsible for it. I'm not because I, I actually think that sometimes we have kids that are very much like us and we're dealing with ourselves and the perception yes. of our experience. Yeah. Yeah. But sometimes we're dealing with another person that is not anything like us and they are confounding us in how they're engaging. Mm -hmm. And sometimes we're officially dealing with our child, but we're really dealing with past, like I said, relationship hurts from other, you know, other relationships. And we're projecting all sorts of things onto those people. But I do know this for sure, that when we are having a bad day, things get worse in our homes because then the energy or the experience that they're, the kids are having with you is in affecting how they're relating to each other and how they're showing up and stuff just gets worse. I don't think it's possible for us to not have bad days. I don't think it's possible for us to have moments where we're gonna go off you know, to this dysregulated space. We're humans, so it's gonna happen. But when we grow in self-awareness and we, you know, do these things like getting strategies and, mm -hmm. and practicing them and having accountability practices or an accountability person, then it is possible to shift it into a different direction. Absolutely. And I think with the co-regulation piece, you know, there is so much truth to that. And then if we don't have those strategies as moms, then we're told, oh, well, your child feeds off of you. And then you feel like, well, now I feel even yeah. worse. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> because, I don't want to do that. I right? just know it's a, a reality. It is. it is a law. It is. Yeah. it is. So being able to have that plan that you're talking about and being able to have the self-compassion to talk to yourself like you would talk to your friend yeah. in that moment exactly. is so, so helpful. Yeah. That, um, that is, but it comes with absolutely time. true. Because if you came to me and you were like, I just had a really bad day and it was after this conversation yet, because that could totally happen, right? Like you're having a really bad day and you're going, I, but I know what the right things are. I knew I should have done the right things. And I would never say to you, yeah, you should have done better. Mm -hmm. I would not say those words. Right. I would say, right. I'm really sorry. I've been there. I, it must feel pretty crummy. And yeah, what can we do to make you feel better? What can I do to help you? create a plan to approach it differently? What can we do to heal the, the rift between or potential rift that you have with a child? Um, I would do all those things, but I would never be self, or I would never be condemning because I genuinely am not. Mm -hmm. I've been there, I know what it's like, yeah. and I know that it won't help. But then for some bizarre reason, when we stand in front of the mirror and we speak to ourselves, our natural tendency is, you are bad, yeah. <laughs> yes, you are a bad mom. Yeah, yeah. 
And I think another piece of that that you spoke to a little bit is the fact that sometimes it's a certain child that pushes that a little bit more than others. And, you know, I I have four kids. Mm -hmm. And so plus my husband. And so we have, you know, five plus me, different nervous systems living under the same roof with different needs. And sometimes it's that they are so similar, it hurts, but sometimes it's that they're so different, it's hard to understand. Um, I am not a seeker. I don't love taking risks and being loud and that's just not me. And I've got a kid Mm -hmm. who's like that. Mm -hmm. And if she wakes me up first in the day, (laughs) that's probably gonna be a rough morning for me. You know, so every child, that relationship is just so different. And so I love working with moms to to try to look at their kids through a different lens as well. Mm -hmm. You know, as much as we talk to talk about having that self-compassion and speaking to each other as though speaking to the mirror as though it's a friend, we also have to step back and depersonalize things sometimes. And to be be able to say, you know, your overreaction is, is because you're overstimulated. Yeah. It's not that you're a bad mom, you know, mm-hmm. to have the language to put to that is, is really powerful. I think. Yeah. That reminds me of Brene Brown's book last year, the Atlas of the heart. Um, okay. I'm not familiar. I know Brene Brown, but I haven't read that. Book. Yeah. It's like a compendium of emotions. Like she speaks to every single emotion and how, you know, it's almost like a dictionary for emotions, but oh, wow. she says, if you name it, if you actually can put words, to the experience that you're having it um i I don't want to quote her here but it essentially takes away the intensity of something or it helps you to clarify it or to put it in context or create meaning around it and i think Mm -hmm. there's something to be said about us identifying our feelings and to get into the habit of doing that Um, that was actually the first step that i took teresa before i brought out my full like self-regulation thing to do with my kids when I realized it was me and not yeah. them who needed more work, I just printed off an emotion chart. And instead of giving it to my child, he was having really anxious thoughts and having a hard time. Yeah. I didn't give it to her. I gave it to me. And I yeah. just started showing them, here's where I am huh. on this. And, you know, all of a sudden that silly chart on the wall, you know, had value to it because they could see how it was helping me diffuse the situation. That's interesting. You know, I don't accept the F word in my family and I don't mean the F bomb because sometimes that does happen. Uh, I have grown kids, but I, I mean, fine. <laughs> the word oh, fine. Yeah. I'm like, no, that one is an unexpected harder. word. <laughs> yes. Let's unpack fine. Show me what an emoji is or like, you know, cause my kids are all te- teenagers or no, I've got one teenager and then 20 somethings. And for me, um, I didn't grow up in an emoji world, but they yeah. did. And so then I can just say, well, give me an emoji. What does it feel like? That's and smart. Yeah. That's, that's a great way. I'll have to keep that in my pocket, especially as the kids get older. Yeah, it is. It's really useful. I mean, I, with grown kids and at really any child, you can't force the discussion. How do you feel? If they don't want to tell you how they feel, they don't want to talk with you. That's their choice. That's their prerogative. And it can be very uncomfortable Mm -hmm. as a mom to say, okay, they are not presently there. Like I had a kiddo just weeks ago say to me when he was frustrated, obviously I have one boy. So, um, but I, he said to me that I don't need a life coach right now, mom. Mm -hmm. And it's hard. It's hard for me to go, okay, all right. He gets to have a space. He gets to have age or a dominion over his his internal world, and so then sometimes I have to back off, even when I go, but I could help you, and and then I have to back off and just let him be. But then later on, he can come and say, "Hey, this is where I was at, and this is how you know how I resolved it." Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think sometimes the feelings place is a hard place to yeah. start with ourselves and kids because so so. But another place I like to go is just how it actually literally feels in our bodies. Yeah. Um, I love reading about interoception. Yeah. It's one of the one of the newest <laughs> senses, but really that has started to come into play with understanding our internal world. 
So, you know, it could literally be understanding if you're hungry or thirsty. Um, but sometimes it's not that simple. Sometimes it is sensing your heart rate to understand if you're starting to get to that point of being really anxious or angry. And some of us, that sense really needs some work. And there are things that we can do to help that. Um, but understanding that internal sensation is hard. And especially as moms, because we put it on the back burner, right? We, you know, we, we dismiss it, we push it down. And so I'm for it. Yeah, yeah. yeah, exactly. We don't have time for it. But we have to right? like you understand that we have to, we have to have time for that mm -hmm. more than anything else. You know, how often do we get to dinner? And then we're like, Oh, I haven't eaten all day. No wonder I'm so angry. I'm hangry, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. But we've ignored that interoception. We've pushed it back so much that we have to, it takes time to get it back in play. You know, yoga was a really big movement for me into that direction. Yeah. And yeah. I, I don't know who's, you know, got different experiences with yoga, but the way I was taught about yoga was, nope, that doesn't fit consistent with the worldview that I ascribed to at the time. And and so then I would hear a lot of negative stuff about it, but it was powerful for me, you know, having had a car accident when I was 19 or 20 or something, I've had certain physical issues since then. And I took a lot of Advil in my life. It was a big issue for my stomach and I had to let it go. I couldn't continue using it. And then I discovered yoga and it was powerful. It, it truly did release a lot of, um, really like chronic pain kind of challenges that I'd had. And also I noticed myself slow down a lot more. I slowed down a lot more. I was more aware of how my body was feeling. Yeah. And now I understand it's like energy flowing through your body or not. If you've got back and yeah. neck and shoulder pains. Mm -hmm. And when I do that, then I do truly feel like I'm able to feel what's going on in my body. Yes. That is so key. Um, it's hard to unpack that, but that's really one of the first steps in working with moms yeah. is being able to even feel the escalation. Yeah. Or what does it even feel like to feel good? Yeah. What does it feel like to feel good in your body? Yeah. Whether, and I'm, you know, not just the body image piece, but mm -hmm. also just to feel relaxed and at ease. What is that? And, you know, sometimes this is kind of a hang up that I have when I talk about self-regulation with moms and getting that connected feeling is that sometimes we think that it's a matter of being calm all day, yeah. but that's really not the case. It's, it's, it's just being able to swing into the stress state, out of the stress state to respond and connect because it takes energy to connect with our kids. Yeah. Um, and, you know, to deal with the crying or the whining or the complaining, mm -hmm. And then be able to come back from that. So it's, it's not just being the sort of like Zen state of, <laughs> yeah, you know, it, being impervious all day because we're people. Yeah. And it's we're, just a matter of not getting oh, stuck, I yeah. think. Yes, that's, that's really, yeah, that's beautifully said because that's the key. You know, yeah, because I was having a conversation the last 24 hours with a mom who, um, this is the exact experience is just intense emotions and but very capable in her own right and very much wanting to be able to do it the right way as we all do and is really has very many systems and routines to make things happen in a really healthy way but when you know sleep deprivation oh. and oh you know yes. yeah and big you know kids fighting and imperfect to house cleaning and all that it gets to you yeah that's sleep deprivation that's a big one hey mm -hmm. yeah i went to a continuing ed course recently about sleep and i i know the instructor kept getting tired of me because i was raising my hand i'm like but what about the moms <laughs> like what if you can't yeah. have this beautiful setup at night and people mm -hmm. aren't listening to you and what if the only time you have to check your email is 10 yeah. p.m and the, you know what i mean yes. like all of these things that we just are not in control of and that's so number one way to like any to call sensory need to cause overwhelm for anybody exactly. it's sleep deprivation it really is <laughs> for yeah. anybody because i've been married to somebody who's done night shifts since like oh, 1994 wow. or something um and so and i see it with him 
and he he really is just tapped out and not fully coherent he's super logical and super capable of keeping systems running and and yet when fatigue sets in like that level of fatigue then yeah it's not good but i you know i'm reminded too because i i'm working with a lot of younger moms who are you know um sorry distracting a lot of younger moms who are really sleep deprived yeah and you know in that early stage of parenting and oh i have so much compassion for that because that really is overwhelming there is nothing more that you need than self uh, or for self-care than sleep yeah and yet reality check we can't get it all the time when our babies mm -hmm. are young and it's that but what do we do as homeschool moms like we still somehow like stack our day starting at 7 a.m until you know and thinking that we can still function as though we're getting a full night's sleep like we yeah we can't always do that want, so yeah yeah <laughs> Yeah. And, yeah, and I remember, in fact, with sleep deprivation, I tended to want to do it more. Like I was like, we are going to do this thing no matter what. It's going to happen. It, it And it didn't make any sense. Well, that's I don't like know that cortisol but... kicks in, I think. And so then you kick into hyperdrive mode. Yeah. And then you kind of is? go into this sort of, oh, well, I can power my way through it. Maybe I can't control the night. But I will but control, I can control the, the morning. Like yes. that will that will be how I want it to be. But I think that that's why it's hard. Sometimes moms will tell me, I don't know why I'm having these problems. I've never had problems my whole life. And, mm -hmm. you know, now I'm like, well, <laughs> there's this whole litany of reasons why it could have started now. Yeah. But I think one of the main reasons is that as adults, until we have children, we have a lot of control in our home, right? Like we, you might get married or have a partner and have to share that. That's an adjustment. But at the end of the day, that's an adult. And you can kind of reason with most people. But at, when you're a mother, like your sanctuary mm -hmm. is your home. And mm -hmm. all of a sudden, the place where you go to get away from the stressors of the world, right. your sanctuary is like, mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, it's not anymore. Yeah. And so, yeah, where do you go when your home is not that place of rest? and restoration like it used to be you're gonna have to find a way yeah to with the strategies we're talking about to get i don't know at least create a plan i'll say i don't think there is a way to be in a static state of peace and mm -hmm. zen i don't think it's a thing yeah yeah um i think having that plan in and you, you speak a lot to boundaries mm -hmm. Teresa, and that's really important um figuring out what you need need first of all and then yeah. figuring out a way to carve out little bits of time throughout the day and it's going to look different than it ever did before you had kids it's probably very different and it never stays the same just to make it more fun because the kids grow up or else they go in and out of certain needs yeah yes you know and, and differently because they're all different kids and and you're like okay so am i going to get a break like things are going to seem really easily or easy and then it does for like the weekend and then it isn't again on monday morning or something happens that is wildly unexpected and you know if in all of this i think like the biggest thing that we can do is actually not a strategy in itself it's more living in acceptance of what is and that sounds like like very meta kind of discussion, but I, I actually think it is the most important thing is to recognize that we're not actually in control of everything. Uh oh, Teresa, I lost you. I can't hear you anymore. Do you know why? Hilarious. Oh, there you are. Sorry about what? that because my daughter was calling me. <laughs> oh, okay. That's a good reason. Yeah. Very good. Um, you know, what I was going to say is that it's hard for us, like we can put all the practices and strategies in the world to these challenges. And at the end of the day, we have to live in acceptance that we aren't always in control. We still have things to grow and learn in. And everything won't happen seamlessly stuff that has nothing to do with homeschooling and parenting will happen in our worlds and we have to live in acceptance and i say that and yet i absolutely have moments where this is i know what i'm saying is true 
and I really have yielded more to acceptance now in my life than I ever have. And I also know that there is plenty of opportunity for me to learn more about what that really means and to put skin on that. I'm sure you're going to be given opportunities I'm, every day. Yes. Yeah. How delightful. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think that that's so true that when our definition of a good day is, I know we've talked about yeah. that, <laughs> but if your definition of a good day never happens, yeah. then maybe we need to step back and figure out what a good day really, really is for you in your situation with your kids and whether they're, you know, going off, bouncing off the walls or whether they don't like hugs because they want to say to themselves, you know, how are we reading all of this information in our yeah. home and what stories are we telling ourselves? Because that matters so much. That matters. That matters so much. Actually, that story that we're telling ourselves or the meaning that we're creating around things. Um, when uh, we've had, I don't remember if we've had this conversation because I have this one a lot with many different people, but this book, um, Loving What Is by Byron Katie. Mm, it, that sounds oh, good it, though. So good. She is actually the creator of the questions that I always referred to in my early coaching days. And I still do, but I would speak about what is your thought? Is it a hundred percent true? Um, do you, you know, beyond a shadow of a doubt, is it true? Are there, or is there another way to frame your thought? And if there were another way to frame it or shift your perspective, what would that mean about your scenario or who you are showing up in it? And that was so huge for me. I first heard about those questions through Dr. Daniel Amen in a live webinar and he, just it blew my mind because I was like, what do you mean? My thoughts are my thoughts. They're just true because I thought, you know, I thought them, mm -hmm. I think them. And that concept of challenging your thoughts sounded nutty to me, first of all. I truly was like, this is crazy. But then the more that I put it into practice, I realized that actually being married is a sure sign that you can recognize or being in a long term relationship with someone, you can see that your thoughts really are different than your partners. We do not think the same things. We are like all over the place thinking different things. And we're close. We're together for 25 or more years and we still don't think the same thoughts. Me challenging my thoughts helps me to create different meaning around whatever I'm seeing. That's really challenging to do in the beginning. But the more that you can hold it, hold your thoughts lightly, we're really saying to ourselves, let's define meaning based on possible alternatives so that we can decide what would be the best way to frame this or way to see this child or way to see our emotions or how we're showing up in it so that there's space for us to grow in it. Yeah, I'm smiling so big because you asked me some of those questions in our first session together. <laughs> Did and I? They were so powerful. Yeah. <laughs> they really were. Um, and I've and I've gone back to think about them as I do most things yeah. in life with my <laughs> mulling over things. But yeah, those are yeah. very powerful questions. And thinking about the same idea of perspective of things, it reminds me of if there are any other moms that identify with the framework of a highly sensitive person. Mm -hmm. We think about the sensitivities and the inconveniences that come with that because there are some mm -hmm. really. But the beauty of that is being creative I usually. Usually HSPs are very creative, very mm -hmm. empathetic. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of beautiful reasons. In fact, I would love to somehow do a survey of a homeschool community and see how many moms are highly sensitive people on that framework because I can I like see how many that. of us would be drawn to homeschooling because we want that connection yeah. and we can see in our kids mm -hmm. how our kids would benefit from it. Yeah, But I think that's what makes it so hard then when we get home and then those sensitivities are triggered in us and we think well the very reason that i wanted to start homeschooling now is the reason that i'm wanting to leave it right and so wow careful we start Mic we drop. get to this point where we're like uh -huh. i gotta quit you know i, I can't mm -hmm. keep doing this and so it's yeah the very place we need to be can be the place we just want to run away yeah. from so mic drop Whitney, that was amazing. That right there. Well, it, the very reason it, yeah, that it, we want to go to homeschooling might be the reason we want to leave. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah.
and leave fast, yeah. <laughs> leave running. <laughs> How yeah. many times have other moms just, you know, looked up the in, the enrollment information for the local public school district or, you know, done the dreaded, if you don't get yourself together, we're going to go to public school. And it's like, you know, you're not going to follow up on that. But it's like this care. Yeah, that some people do, just yeah. for the record. <laughs> yeah. Some people do. And for me, it was, where's the yellow bus? Like, where where is the path? Because we're going to make sure the kids are on it. And I really did have that moment. And I didn't live in that town, so I didn't know where the yellow bus was, but I was watching. Uh, yeah, yeah. Well, I see it at 6.30 in the morning, still dark, running down the street. And I point it out to my kid every once in a while. It's awake. not our bus, by the way. <laughs> we just have a local bus driver that lives down the road. But I use that as a learning opportunity. <laughs> but it is, it's, it's real it, if we don't meet those needs. Mm -hmm. You know, we have to choose the relationship over the, the curriculum. You know, yeah. so it, that's why I'm so passionate about bringing this information to moms mm -hmm. to make to make the marathon of homeschooling a beautiful thing instead of a survival mode. Yeah. Amen, sister. Totally. Wow. We have a lot to, to chat about. And I knew that this would be the case. I don't remember when I first connected with you, but I remember seeing you on Instagram and thinking, oh, wow. I, you know, we're obviously speaking the same language. Well, you have that moment where it just is so encouraging to see someone else mm -hmm. who's interested in the same way of serving other homeschool moms. And I really think that was just a way, a good thing about the algorithm yeah. that we're already speaking so There's negatively about. Good otherwise, about it. <laughs> yeah. Otherwise, I don't yeah. know how I would have found you. Yeah. So glad it happened. I know. I, well, and I also don't believe in coincidence, but that's a different discussion. I, I truly think that it is very cool, too. And because both of us have, um, like, maybe the ability to talk the talk around it because we've done a lot of research and study in it but also the practical experience we know we've been there yeah we might yeah. be there today <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah possible. just this morning in fact we were, we were doing morning time we were singing and it was just not going well and i just saw i just stepped back and was like i have a choice in this mm -hmm. moment i can just call it and say let's move on mm -hmm. because this is not good for my self-regulation mm -hmm. <laughs> and it's just me everybody else was doing fine being nice and goofy or we could keep pushing through right and i just called it Amen. you know so yeah. just those yeah. mo those moments throughout the day where you just have to make a choice is this really worth it yeah it is and anyways if you want to approach literally any moment that you have with a child or a couple kids you're going to have another opportunity i guarantee you <laughs> just give it an hour give it a day there'll be another opportunity to you know process yet another thing so, so sometimes you just want to call it yeah mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah such a delight chatting with you uh where do we find you online and yeah so i'm on sensational moms um yeah. i am on instagram at sensational moms and I'm also online at sensationalmoms.com. So a uh, great handout there. If you go and fill out the form, it'll go straight to your inbox. And I am not for inbox clutter. I get visually overwhelmed easily. <laughs> so I, you will not get spammed with a lot of emails, but I just really wanna get some resources out to moms to get them moving in the right direction and get them unstuck. And just to see that you are not alone in feeling this way. No, not at all. In fact, I had a mom what was in the last two or three days that said that you think this is an unusual experience and i'm like no far from not far from it in fact the unusual ex experience is to not have this as an experience that would be and if you are that person I'm pretty sure you're not watching this because <laughs> this is not relevant for you yeah. but also you and then you are an anomaly for sure if you don't have that repeated experience of what am i going to do with my big emotions for sure yeah. It was it was such a pleasure chatting with you, Whitney. Thanks, Teresa. As always. Yeah. And we'll chat with you soon. And if anybody's curious, go check Whitney out and the things she has to offer. Okay. Sounds good. Okay. Have a good one. See you, everybody.